And so to talk a little bit more about you know, AI, ML, data analytics, data lakes, and all the fun things we've just been talking about, uh, OLX Group, it's a massive organization. Uh, but to talk through what they've been doing, we have Olaf Zistrick, who's the chief technology officer from OLX Group, who's going to talk about their journey with AWS. Olaf. Thanks, Len. Thanks, awesome. Len. Thank you. This is awesome. Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here. Um, my name is Olaf, and uh, as you may can guess by my accent, I'm German. But I'm uh, not only German, I'm also born Berliner, which makes it even more special for me to be here today. So welcome all to my hometown. Um, I'm the CTO of the OLX Group. Um, some people refer to us as the biggest internet company you have never heard of. So let me start with telling you who we are and what we do. The OLX Group is part of Nespers. Nespers is a South African-based internet and entertainment group with a market cap of more than 100 billion. It was founded in 1915. It's also one of the largest technology investors in the world, including companies like Tencent, the Chinese internet giant, or Delivery Hero from Berlin, just to name two. Nespers uh, heavily invests into areas like fintech, e-commerce, video entertainment, health, education, travel, food delivery, and classifieds. And this is what we do. The OLX Group is Nespers classified segment. In simple words, uh, we enable our users to pretty much buy and sell anything within their local communities. We do facilitate more transactions than any classifieds player on Earth. Our mission is to make trading of used goods as simple, as convenient, as safe and as much fun as possible, driven by smart product and technology solutions. We uh, run a portfolio of brands and platforms. Our main brands are OLX in emerging markets, LetGo in the US and Turkey, and Davito, one of the largest uh, internet companies in Russia. In addition, we have a couple of vertical brands, including uh, cars, real estate, but also things like fashion, services, or even heavy machinery. Uh, the latest addition to our group had been the Frontier Car Group from Berlin, uh, where we just announced an investment and partnership. Let's look at a few numbers. As you can see, we are indeed not small. We operate globally and are currently active in uh, 43 countries, serving 350 million unique users every month. We do have 35 offices and employ more than 5,000 people. 1,000 work in product development and engineering. We have a couple of development hubs around the globe, including cities like Moscow, Barcelona, Buenos Aires, Delhi, Lisbon, Poznan, and Berlin, uh, where we are building out a larger development hub. Three years back, we embarked on the journey to move all our applications into the cloud. I'm happy to say that we are finishing our AWS migration as we speak, so we are going to shut down our last data center late summer this year. But the story I want to share with you today is not yet another uh, bare metal to cloud migration story. Instead, I want to talk about data and how AWS has helped us to get our data management in order. Any successful internet company these days is built on top of data, as data is driving insights and product innovation. So the ultimate goal is to power everybody in the company with data and give each and everyone exactly, uh, access to exactly the data that he or she needs. This is not an easy task, and it has not become easier with the GDPR in place. So what have we done to solve that? If you think of data, you can break down the problem into four main areas. First, data collection and storing of data. Second is what we call data democratization. It's about providing easy and self-service access in a secure and compliant manner. Third is more traditional BI and reporting. And last but not least, the fancy stuff. It's about data products and product innovation with the help of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So let's take a brief look at each of the four areas. At the heart of our foundation sits AWS S3. We use it as a central data lake. We currently store around 400 terabytes of compressed data in S3. 
On top of that, we have developed two in-house solutions. The first one we call Hydra. It allows us to track user behavior and stream those events into S3. Currently, we capture around 40 billion, uh, 4 billion events per day or 40,000 events per second. The second technology we call LiveSync. It allows us to replicate data from all our transactional platform databases in near real time. Once the data is in a central place, you can tackle the problem of data democratization. For security and compliance reasons, it's simply not an option to grant access to everyone. So we have closed the data lake completely. Still, you want to make sure that data is available to everybody within minutes and just a few clicks. For that, we have developed a tool that we call the Data Catalog. The Data Catalog allows users to request access to data, to any data source that we have in the data lake. To do so, users have to specify a reason, so what they are intending to do with the data, uh, as well as things like the retention policy. All our data in the lake is classified, so we also know whether the requested data contains any private sensitive information. In case it does, uh, we either anonymize those fields, or in case access is needed, there's an additional approval step via our DPO. To process the classification data, we use AWS Glue. If all is fine, we simply pump the data into a dedicated data reservoir, also in S3. To pump the data, we use AWS EMR. The data is made available in either JSON format or as packet files. Once the data is available, you can start making use of the data. For BI and reporting, our stack is pretty straightforward. So we do use AWS Redshift as our data warehouse and Tableau for visualization and reporting. We run several instances of that stack, both for global as well as local teams. Having such an architecture has helped us to solve a couple of super crucial problems. For example, we are now able to provide consistent and streamlined reporting of all our main business KPIs across platforms. In addition, local analysts can much more focus on in-depth analytics support supporting their local business. All of that is done on top of the same data. In case analysts need access to raw data, they can also simply crunch the reservoir directly with the help of AWS Athena and also visualize that with Tableau. The last area is probably the most exciting. As you all know, there had recently been a huge hype around AI and ML. But there's also no doubt that this is changing the way we're going to build applications in the future. Any application on Earth will sooner or later be an intelligent application providing highly personalized service to its users. Underlying technologies like MXNet or TensorFlow are becoming commodity, which means, uh, which means that speed of innovation will only accelerate. But talent is scarce, so you want to lower the entry barrier as much as possible and enable easy experimentation for any engineer in the organization, not just data scientists. For that, we are working on a default pipeline based on AWS StageMaker, allowing us to do model training, feature engineering, and serving of models at scale. We already have a pretty cool set of applications. So we do use ML for image recognition and classification, for fraud prevention, for content moderation, for our recommender systems, or search ranking. Moving forward, we will heavily invest in that field. So stay tuned. This is what I wanted to share with you today. Um, please follow us on Twitter under OLX Tech Berlin. Uh, soon after my talk, we're going to post a question, and if you know the answer, you can win an iPad. Also, uh, if you are interested in the details, do not miss our session tomorrow at 4 p.m. in Room Apollo. Let me end uh, by saying uh, thanks to our friends and partners in AWS. It had been a remarkable journey, and yeah, the team had really been of tremendous help and support. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of the show. Bye. Well, <laughs> thank you, thank you, incredible. I just love the way uh, Olaf casually throws out stats. It wasn't too long ago that we were all really proud if you had a billion rows in a database. Now it's kind of billion events a day.